either down at the main or in one of your branches. So come in, check out the library, and get some great summer reading. You're watching At the Public Library on Cable Channel 54, City Watch. You can also see At the Public Library on Tuesdays at 3 p.m., Fridays at 8 p.m., and Saturdays at 2 p.m. The San Francisco Public Library is pleased to present Factory Maneuvers, an examination of the mechanization of bookbinding in the 19th century with your hosts, Bay Area bookbinders John Demerit and Dominic Riley. Hello, it's Book Talk with John Dominic. John, say hello to the people at home, please. Oh, hello. Now, we've been persuaded to take a break from our browsing here at the special collections at the San Francisco Public Library. Deep Library. reading. Deep reading. Yeah. To Just share with you some of the observations we've made. Now, John. Yes. What have we been looking at particularly today? Uh, two books. One book, Dominic's book from the 18th century. This is called... Um, Oh, it's Horatius. Yeah, and I have the table book of art built hmm. about a hundred years later than your book, yeah. 1870s, yeah. 19, a typical 19th century book. Now, let's talk about a few of the surface differences in these books. Sure. Though well, my book, for instance, and this is obvious, you can yeah. tell this, my book's bound in leather. It's covered with leather. Right. And uh, leather, of course, is expensive. It's difficult to prepare. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Costs a lot of money. Now, your yeah. book... My book, on the other hand, is bound in cloth, a linen, probably coated with some right. sort of starch. So what Very we're really saying is that um, major change happened in the 19th century with relation to bookbinding, and that was, John? Cloth. Mm, something more? Uh, Xeroxing. A mm, little mm. out of time. Binding books at the 4 No, no, I have to stop you there. It was, uh, in fact, mechanization. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that. That's right. Um, and we're going to look today at some of those machines that intervened in the book bindery. And we're going to visit two very different book binderies that are related in some ways. We certainly are. Right. Which are uh, actually, I think, some of our old predecessors were working at those binderies. Yeah, John and I both come from a very long line of ancestors. That's right. Some of whom happen to be book binders. Book binders. Yeah. In fact, I had an, an uncle who was um, a yeah. bookmaker, but that's something slightly different. And he went to jail right. for it. And now, uh, my grandfather was a leather worker. Oh, he was? Yeah, a, a football coach. Oh, right, OK. Yeah. Now, this is a skeleton of a binding. A book, not a little bit unlike this. And what you can see about it is that it yeah. has its boards, which are these, attached to the book before it's bound. And they're held in now, place by means of these cords that the book is sewn on, and they're held in through these holes. Mm -hmm. The big difference that we want to look at today with John's book here. My book, on the other hand, comes in two parts. A text block, which has been sewn and worked together, and a case or a cover, which is made separately from the book block and then sort of wed together at the last minute in a, in a big standing press. Right. And we're going to look at some of the visceral differences between these two structures, where the similarity is we're both starting with a printed sheet of paper, which we get from the printer, printed four up, folded into what's called a signature. Which pops inside here. Which is nested inside these and is gathered huh. into a book, which is the same thing that we will both start out with, yeah. but they're all similarities and, and the work is very different. So what we're really saying is, although yeah. these books look different on the outside, the major differences come in the 19th century with the way they're built. Right, things that aren't so obvious when you first look at the book. The way they're built. So we have a couple of pictures, and I think up there we can see yeah. that's a, a, a nice engraving of a picture of a bindery in the 18th century. Right. And what are a couple of things that we notice about this? There are four people in this mm -hmm. room. This guy here is beating the sections. The paper needs to be flattened before mm -hmm. it's bound. Right. Here, on the, uh, sitting at the sewing frame, is a woman doing the sewing. The, the, the division of labor was always done down gender lines, and women always did the sewing and the sewing of headbands. Mm -hmm. And they sat down generally to do that. Then over here, we have this man who's here at a thing called a press and plow, and he's shaving the top edge of the books off. It's 
to make them flat. And here's a guy operating the big standing press, a wooden press. And that's essentially most of the activities uh, uh, in bookbinding are described in this picture. Now, that's right. this and other picture, on the other hand, John, you'll tell yeah, us about. This, this picture represents a very large factory style 19th century binder. And this is just one small section of this binder. And maybe starting with the perspective, maybe starting in the back, you can see a group of people there who are perhaps folding, maybe gathering. Uh, you can see something with a sort of a treadle or a windmill there. That might be a folding machine. And these are all operated by steam via Correct. these... Um, you can see this cog or this, this uh, sort of treadle up on top, which is probably operated by a large steam-powered engine, maybe in the basement of mm. the building. A little bit towards us, you can see the giant stacks of signatures everywhere, probably women sewing at the sewing frames. Mm -hmm. A little closer to that, you can see someone with a beating hammer, or a ba rounding and backing hammer, probably rounding and backing. A little closer to that, you think, I think you see some very rudimentary sort of guillotines. They look great. Yeah, yeah you can see the sort of shavings on the floor. Yeah. And the, the interesting thing about this illustration is that it just, it just, it represents a very small part of the bindery. John, could, it, I, could I just interrupt you, please? What? Nothing, I just want to interrupt, interrupt you. So. Right. Oh, thank you. Yeah, oh, well, I think now what we should do is talk, you know, we've told you a little bit about our ancestors. Yes, right? our ancestors. We did say that we had ancestors who were bookbinders, and we weren't joking, it was true. And I think, first of all, we're going to look at my ancestor, who was called Archibald Riley, and he was a bookbinder in the 1780s in London. And here he is, in his bindery in 1786. Oh, which, oh it's right. Now, this is the year of the great bookbinders' uprising when four of them went to Newgate Jail for demanding th for a reduction of their working hours by one hour. Did you know that? Yeah. They've, and my ancestor, Archibald, What do you mean? He looks like he just got up. No, he's just got out of Newgate Prison. That's why he looks pissed off. Now, here we are in the picture, in the foreground, the plow that we saw. Yeah, and what do you see that, that he's sitting in That's front That's the of? sewing frame. Huh. In the background, a small standing press. Yeah. There's nothing mm -hmm. else That's in That's all binder. there is, really, to the binder. Yeah, a bit some, of some, leather. Some hand tools. Yeah. I mean, you know. What's that he just picked little, up? That's a little knocking down mallet. Uh -huh. And here's a little book I think that we're going to see him sew in a bit. In signatures. Absolutely. Now, by contrast, we're going to look at your ancestor. What was his name, John? His name was Charleston Temerit. Yeah. A 19th century hack merchant. Oh, yeah. With not a care in the world, really. Really? Yeah. yeah. And here he is knocking up books. In the bindery, you can see the difference. Oh, of, absolutely. Well, there's about 6,000 pounds worth of difference between the two binderies. You see two large pieces of machinery behind him. Mm -hmm. The board cutter, where old Charleston is right now. That's he looks binders. kind of like you, doesn't he? He, he is a distant relative, yeah. Mm. Now, next to him is a guillotine used for cutting paper. Where's that? Oh, on the left. The gray monstrosity. God, that's a brute, isn't it? Yeah. It is a brute, and it can really cut He paper. was a messy old bugger, wasn't oh, he? Look at him. He, he, look at that place. Yeah. It's a disgrace. You should see the floor. Ugh. Yeah. I think, think he cleaned this up before we went over there. Really? Yeah. They didn't care back then, did they? They, they, didn't, they didn't care at all. So wage labor we're talking about, really. I mean, this guy is, he works in a factory. He doesn't really have the same autonomy that old Archibald had back then. He works from 7 in the morning till 9, 10 at night. He does not, six really? Six days a week. Whew. Now, we're going to look at the operations involved now in this... Uh, in these binders. In the 18th and century Yeah, binders. 1786, we're back in the bindery. Yeah. Archibald. Sewing. Now, we saw the sheets earlier, and here he is. Now, this job usually done by a woman, I understand. That. Yes. What's that he's tying well, on Well, this is called the sewing key, and uh -huh. you've got it. That little piece of brass in his yeah. hand. Yeah. Now, we sew around this cord, right? But you've got to lock it yeah. into place, so he's going to... You're doing a special knot there. Mm -hmm. It's called a key knot. You put it in this groove. Yeah. And it gets wrapped around this bar at the top. Yes. Round it goes. Tie it off. And then you need to make it nice and taut, so you can do this by means of these With screws. With those wooden screws. These sewing frames are very old. They date yeah. back to the 13th All this equipment century. was made out of wood, Absolutely. primarily. Yeah, not fiberglass or anything, anything like that. No nylon thread no. or anything. Now, he's got five of those cords, yeah. and he's sewing around them. you can see them. that he's sort of going around them. He, yeah, you don't go in a line. You just do a loop, a figure of eight mm -hmm. thing. And you just sew them one after the other. Mm -hmm. um, Linking up each time to the next one. Yeah, that's called a kettle stitch, yeah. correct? Yes, it's Irish um, unbleached linen thread. Yeah. When it's sewn, you take the keys out, of course, mm -hmm. and you have to cut the book away from its cords, as I think he's going to do. Yes, yeah, so he's going to there. cut them off with some shears. Um, and once that's done, you take the keys off. They just unwrap. Yeah. Um, you see, you don't have to cut those. 
And there it is, all sewn up. It's starting neat. to look like a yeah. book. Now, Charleston, on the other hand, has a different way of doing it. My Charleston goodness, look at that. Charleston has a nice sewing machine, another well, monstrosity. When was that invented? Side. Oh, in the 1850s, I believe, giving it a little kickstart. This one happens to be uh, electric, although the oh. older ones were steam powered. Oh, yeah. he probably would have used steam. Lot. He probably would have used steam. No. Now he's using it. He places the signature of the book on a platen, hits a treadle with his foot, and the book is sewn, left in place, sewn in gigantic blocks oh, of here's... more than one book, which will then be cut apart later. Right. He's finding the middle of the signature, putting it on the platen. It's pierced and sewn at the same this time. This looks like hard work, though. Very hard work. Cost cutting work. Cost cutting work, incredibly <laughs> fast compared to hand sewing. Right. That's a good, uh, nice little picture of your yeah, old. You can see the cams. There. there is a similarity, isn't there? It's cutting off the threads, removing. You wouldn't just sew one book at a time. You can sew up to 30 or 40 books wow. at a time, depending on how many signatures. And there's no cords here. No it's cords, just... no tapes, no wow. anything. Now, trimming. Now, uh, we're looking in, in the 1780s at trimming. Mm -hmm. It's been unchanged for many, many, many What's centuries. What's this piece of equipment this called? This is called really, a, uh, a, 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 a laying press. It sits in a tub. Yeah. You screw the book in. This is the fore edge we're going to trim first. Uh -huh. And it has a little piece of uh, binder's board at the back of it yeah. to uh, protect it. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually take this thing called a plough, which is sitting on the desk, which is essentially a sharpened blade, which is held together between these two pieces of wood with a screw. Yeah. And we're going to run it up and down it's like in another, this gutter. It's like another press. It's another kind of press, yeah. And as you'll see, it shaves the little that little bit of the page off. And you don't just cut the whole book block at once. Oh no! You t every time you do it, you turn in with a little yeah. the screw a little bit, and it moves the blade in. So you're turning. You can see that you're turning the blade a little bit there. Yeah. In and in and in, in and then it's nicely trimmed. Then you go all the way around the book. It's very fast. Would you do one or two books at a time? You sometimes you could put three in. Depending on on the thickness, you know. So the plow fits on a track on the laying press. Yeah, absolutely. Then you have to do the other two sides, you know, you take it out and you turn it around, but that's essentially mm -hmm. all there is to it. Mm -hmm. And it makes a beautiful cut. Oh, very smooth. Very smooth. Yeah. On the other hand... Oh, this is good. Charleston's uh, guillotine here, which is the machine you saw in the background before, is a very large machine with a blade, a mechanically operated blade. When, when was this machine? Uh, uh, 1830s or 40s, oh. I believe. You can see he's just cut the four edges of two books yeah, that were sewn earlier. Yeah. There's a fence in the back that there's a gauge oh, okay. set. A clamp comes down to hold it, and the blade is engaged with a clutch. Fabulous. Mind you, you don't want to get your fingers caught in it, do you? Absolutely not. Rounding and backing. Bad, bad accidents can happen. Now, here we are. Before we round and back this book, you see those cords are very thick. They're very thick on. cords. So we fray them out. It's called fraying out the slips. Mm -hmm. And when they're nice and smooth, we don't just take a uh, bookbinder's hammer, which is a slightly rounded hammer, and uh, hit the book gently, very gently, both sides. Now, what's the purpose of doing this rounding? Well, the, 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 book is, the book has a huge swell at the spine, yeah. right? So that swell because has to the, go somewhere. Because of the fold and the thread. Yeah, the fold and the thread makes the book thicker at the spine. So we yeah. put it into a round like that so it will function better as a machine, because uh -huh, it is a machine. Now, you see, again, you're going back into the laying yep, press, which was really the all-purpose piece of equipment Absolutely. in the bindery. We're putting it between these two angled or beveled backing boards. Yeah. We're going to hit it with the hammer again, and that puts a, a joint or a sort of shoulder yeah. on the book. It's that little edge where the board is where going to sit. Where the board will sit flush to. Now, here, on the other hand, is a star backer or a rounder backer Gosh. that will replace hammering a book. It's been slightly hammered, so it's a little bit round already. Uh -huh. uh, Charleston here is clamping the book. He'll put all his weight onto it. Oh, I see the round there, yes. You see the round there, he's going to roll this giant iron round roll over the, over the book. And you can see that it does a pretty nice job. That's a very heavy roller that's it's going on. It's very there. heavy. This is the sort of ultimate Victorian piece of machinery. I love that. I want and he, he did a pretty good job there. Yeah. He's a hard worker. He works very hard. Now, lacing on, of course, this is the board that is going to make the cover of the book, and we're punching holes in it, which you'll see why we're going to do that in a minute. We punch two sets of holes, and then we cut a small channel, which is yeah. also called a slip. You're sort of excavating the board. Excavating there. a little bit, and that's where the cord is going to sit. Yes. So it makes it nice and flat. And into those holes, we're going to actually rub some glue, or paste in this case, yeah. um, onto the slips, those pieces of cord that the book was sewn on. 
and they will then be laced into the board. And you'll yeah. see how this works. You see, they line up nicely. We get the paste. So the board's attached to the book before It's attached at this stage. Before covering. Which is very different to your book, right, that, that, yes. that, that you showed us earlier. So we've rubbed some glue into there. And now we take those slips. Yeah. Does your head get hot during this? Because of the little cap and wearing? Yeah. Sometimes. Mm. Yeah. We pull the little cords through. Although that isn't actually me. I know it looks like me. Yeah. That was my great great ancestor. Oh, that's right. There was such a similarity. Yeah. And we're going to bash down those holes, and that will secure the book in place. Now, headband to its boards. Now, this is all done with a needle and thread and yes. a simple piece of cord. It's important to put chalk on your hands. Yeah. Very important. We Just like a gymnast. Yes, or a snooker player, uh -huh. or a French chef. Uh -huh. And then we're going to sew around the headband uh -huh. two colors, red and white. Generally, they would use two colors. So you're so, actually, this is being uh, mechanically attached to the book. Oh, yes. Sewing. You, so, you actually, you, you, There's no glue involved. Look, you're going here. down there, look. Yeah. You're going right the way through, below the kettle stitch. Right. And below the kettle stitch. Yeah, you don't have to, but that's, it's always good. It's mm -hmm. a psychological reassurance, I think, mm -hmm. more than anything else. Um, and then Using you, two colored threads. Two colored threads. It's a round, in, a round headband. Uh -huh. And then when it's, when it's finished, you just tie off at the end. A bit of glue, but this is hot glue, yeah. made from leftover bits of animals that uh, uh -huh. our carnivorous friends don't eat. And then uh, just glue it down. And then with the knife, the all-purpose paring knife, uh, cut the... Remove the ends. Yeah, in the olden days, they used to be laced they into the boards. They would attach it to the boards. This is m more decorative than yes. structural, and you cut it off. And there it is, beautiful, decorative, stripy headband. Right. And we'll see in the 19th century the new, a new kind of headband because we oh. were really moving into multiples in it. They did away with the it. sewing. They it did was... away with the sewing because it was extremely time But you still have a striped piece another, of material there. So here we see another cost-cutting uh, mechanical device. Now, this striped material came from the binder's Oxford shirt. Get out of here. It's true. Oh. Which the binder probably paid for themselves. What, in terms of, um, yeah. you mean they paid for with the accidents they had, and they, I mean they paid for with their right. lives? The bindery wasn't. Oh, well, they, they, actually, they actually bought them, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. Now, you can see I just wrapped a stiffened cord. Oh, and oh. there you see, he's uh, made several headbands out of his shirt. Uh, shirt yeah. Those <laughs> okay. were for different books. Right. Yeah, old Charleston had a lot of shirts. Now, lining the spine. Oh, okay. After we've attached the headband to the book, we take a piece of crash oh. mull. It's very much like a piece of yeah. cheesecloth. Notice that Archibald didn't line his spine, by the way. No, Archibald did not. Because he didn't need to, because it was already strong. It's so you, already strong. You put this what on. What Charleston is doing here is, since there is no attachment of boards, he is lining the spine of the book, because it needs to have some strength, some compactness, uh -huh. to, make the, to make the book block, uh, the text block, uh, a single unit. Plus, he's creating, by putting this crash on here, he's creating a strong attachment for the, the cover when the right. cover is actually attached in England, to they, we, we used the to call that block. We used to call that mull. Yeah. yeah, they call it mull. It depends what coast you're from. Right. It's also called super. Oh! I think if you call it super, super. if you're from Chicago. Okay. Now he's glued it now, again. He's glued it again. And? And he's going to attach a piece of craft paper just to add some stiffness oh, okay. and just so that the spine retains its shape as it That's opens That's pink and craft paper. Pink craft paper. Not very, very 19th century. Presumably not made to match the headband, which is also pink. That's just an accident, isn't it? Yeah. Because we're not going to see that. Mm -hmm. Now, covering, actually, for old Archibald back in the 1780s was a lengthy process. Covered in, um, in hide, leather. Yeah. This is actually a kip side, which is an adolescent calf skin. Yeah. We make a template. What are you doing there? Making well, just, a template? I'm marking it, it with a nice piece of chalk all the way around. Uh -huh. Oh, he looks tired, doesn't he? Oh. Remembering those long days when he was languishing in jail, I think. He was, yeah. All my family have been great revolutionaries. I have a great radical uh, tradition that I come from. He's cutting it out with this big knife. His paring knife. My mother actually organized a, a revolution within the Women's Institute a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, now he's going to pair the edge here with his, with his paring English knife. paring knife, I have to say. Yeah. Oh, that looks very hard. Well, it's hard, it's tricky too. Yeah. You can lose a finger. Now he's, what's he well, doing Well, he's there? dyeing this dying. now, and it's, um, it's a, a vegetable, vegetable dye, uh, brown, number two. Mm -hmm. There were only four colors of dye in those days. you just days. brush it on with a piece of cloth? Huh? Yeah, it's a rag, really. Yeah. Um, put it on with a rag, or a rag, as they say in, in uh, Montana. And then lift it up to the light. That's what Peter Koch would say. He rag. would, yeah. He's got such a hick accent, doesn't he? Now what? Now we're just pasting it out now, get it nice and wet. Uh -huh. 
was just a wheat starch paste. That's right, it's boiled, you know. Yeah. When it's tacky, we put the book on it, wrap it around. Now you see, we're not, it's not covering the whole book. Yeah. This is called a half binding. The rest now, of the book. Now by this time, the leather is quite supple and easy to work Oh, it's with. wonderful. We're forming it round the spine. We want, yeah. we want to take all the shape and the impressions of those, those raised bands that we sewed it on. The rest of this board will be covered in, in marble paper or, or plain paper, by yeah. the way. Now you're, you're turning it in down the spine. And when it's closed, we wrap, wrap it up, up with cords. and this, this, uh, this cord that goes around pinches each one of those bands on the back mm -hmm. and emphasizes them. Didn't his sleeves get in the way when he was working? Oh, now, sometimes. Charleston, on the other hand, is making what's called a cloth case. He's setting his board cutter up to cut boards, which have not been attached to the book block yet, so now is the time that he would do that. As oh, as OK. As well. yeah. Cutting the panels out. Now, this is really quick. It's the boards, quick. by the way, Archibald would not have used one of these. He would have cut his boards in the plow. Yes, he the same place where he trimmed his the, the book block. And this yeah. is all about multiples. Here's a piece of book cloth, a starch. Now, tell me about book cloth. It's a starch filled linen that was generally coated on the facing side mm -hmm. for making it easy to stamp and to make it pleasing. But this wasn't around in Archibald's day. This was. Oh, no, no. This was uh, came around, well, into wide use in the 1830s and 40s. And it uh -huh. really became the prime. A lot stronger than paper. So it was an alternative, uh, it was better than paper, but it was an alternative to leather. Yes. It was easy to treat, and it was much cheaper. And they had to cheaper. invent new methods to use it. Because sure. in ways it was a lot harder to So use. they got it from the textile industry, yeah. I presume. Yeah, that's, and uh, they in, made some improvements to it that made it easier to work for, okay. for books. Right. Particularly so that it could accept stamping and adhesive. Stamping is the, the gold tooling onto it, right? That's right, the embossing. Now he's now making what, he's, what? What Charleston is doing is making the case. He's using a, a gauge there so that the spine size is always uniform, which is very important. Oh, OK. Putting the two panels down. So this is very, very fast. This is like production line this stuff, is isn't production. it? This is production. You would do hundreds of these at a time. Right. Putting the spine piece down. To, to reinforce that. And the, you can the see spine. that all his movements are very economical. Just goes like that. You can tell he's done it millions and millions of times. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's fast. He's very fast. Now he's going to use a simple turning in tool. Mm -hmm. Hand tools were still quite common in the, you know, addition bindery, but they were just aided. There were certain steps that were aided by, by mechanical machines. But you're still using, I mean, he's still oh, using his hands, right? I mean, he's still using, it's hand This work. is not all like oh, factory is. machine production. Oh, that no, we... that's the common misconception is that factory work was uh, unskilled. Well, I certainly thought that until now. Yeah. Was I laboring under a misconception, was I? I think you were laboring under a, a very large misconception. Well, thank you for putting me right. Yeah. Well, thank Charles you. Yeah. Charleston. <laughs> Looks like a book. Now, it? tooling, ah. on the other hand, Archibald is a... Oh, let me tell you about him, because I'm very proud of him. Uh -huh. This is real gold leaf, and he's, it's in a little book, and he's lifting it out. You can't sneeze when you're doing it. Oh, yeah. oh, you can't even blow. Look at that. Yeah. You've got to blow to get it onto the pad. Now, what's he, what is that pad that he's putting It's made of there? suede. Uh -huh. To the, the other and side of sort leather. Of holds the, uh, mm -hmm. gold, and That's a gold special knife. knife gold, special gold knife, special you can't shape. Touch that with your hand. No, no. You can eat gold leaf. Did you know that? I did. It's very good that. for you. In fact, I think, I think Archibald used to have a bit of a taste for it. That's probably why he died early. He yeah. got gold poisoning. Now, you pick it, pick it up with a bit of cotton, and you can put it onto the back of the spine. Yeah. And then oh, you a, go in with a tool. Yeah, in his hand, he has a, a hot tool. Hot tool. There's an adhesive underneath there, which is glare, which is right. made from um, now, egg treated, white and vinegar. You've treated the book with the egg white and vinegar yes. before you put the gold And that will in. that acts as a kind of adhesive, which right. will stick the, the heat, activates the gold onto the adhesive. That's right. Just a simple center tool. The rest a of the gold. Hat, we call that. Yeah, that's a, that's a 19th century term, though, that's isn't right. it? I'd call that a, cent, a, a center tool, uh -huh. rosette. Now, on the other hand, this is another mm. one of the big adventures of the 19th century. What is this? It's a blocking press or a foil stamping machine. When's, a, when's that from? 1830s. Wow. As well. Around the same time as a guillotine. What Charleston is doing there is he has a f composite foil. It's made out of aluminum, probably, mm -hmm. with a heat-sensitive adhesive on the back of it. Not dissimilar to the gold stamping. But it's not real gold. No, it's not, although you can use it. I think they used to originally, didn't yeah. they? And you can see it's heated up. There's a thermometer on there. It's up to about two, 250 degrees. And you just go in like that's that. that's just all there is to it. You can see, once again, that this is and really for multiple. And mass production. And you can throw away the ones you waste, right? Yeah. Which is a good, which is 5 good. 5% over you always feel Right. For. Now, pressing. What's Archibald doing? He's just putting it straight in the press. I think now he's. That it's covered I think he's pasted out the end paper, but the cover was already attached, so he doesn't need to do much pressing. No. Just close the book generally with a bit of glue in there. Just to give it a little consolidation. Mm -hmm. But there's not very much pressure. But on the other hand, Charleston. Yeah. Mike. Charleston goodness. is. He's. What he's doing now is he's going to wed the text block. Wed. I like that. 
the text block to the cover using a, a wheat starch paste again. Now, what is he pasting up? This is an end paper, right? An end paper, which has been attached to the book, tipped on to the book block, and the, very carefully placing and the, it on the case. And the spine lining is glued on there also. Right. But it's only that that attaches this book to its that's case, right. to that's its cover. The, that's That's it. It's not as strong. No, not as strong. He does the other side. But done correctly, it's stronger than you think. <laughs> is it? <laughs> Making sure that the attachment is right, that it's all in place. Now he's placing it in this very large standing press. You can see. Oh, right. Much bigger than the one that old Archibald was yeah, using. On these things. A metal on. press. And the boards are a little different, too. They have a metal ridge all the oh. way around. So that the spine of the book, the joint of the book, sits on top of the metal. So that little the groove that's near the spine is caused by that metal strip. And you can see all the boards leaning against the wall there. Yeah. So you can do about 50 or 60 books at a time. Right. Time. He's filling the press up with what's called furniture now. Oh, that's nice. Very nice furniture. Where's that from? Uh, the Redwood Forest, I believe. Oh, nice furniture. Don't tell him. Oh, no, OK. And now he's closing the press with, he will put quite a bit of pressure on there to keep the books from warping. Yeah. And you can get it in there overnight. Is it true that the pressure increases overnight in one of these presses? No, it actually decreases. Oh, does it? It'll relax a little bit. Oh. And he's got an extender bar in there. And so there you have it, John. Yeah. Wonderful, wasn't it? it thank was you. Wonderful. Thank you very much to Charleston, to Merritt, and oh. yeah, consummate craftsman. Yeah. Uh, well, Archibald certainly. Yeah. Uh, Charleston's trying. Well, give him a B. Yeah. I'll give him an E for effort. <laughs> <laughs> but um, thank you very much for joining us, and we hope that this... We hope you've gotten an idea of what happened in the hundred years between the way this book, Dominic's book, mm. bound in leather, and this, my book here, sort of swaddled in cloth. Mm -hmm. Maybe that give you an idea of what happened on the inside? Sure, and, it, and if you're interested in doing some research of your own, or looking at some of the wonderful stuff that the special collections yeah. has here at the San Francisco, the San Public, Francisco Library. Public Library special collections. Take a look at the Grabhorn collection, which is a wonderful collection of books about books. Absolutely. One of the best collections. It's, it's a great place to, to do research into book yeah. history of any kind, especially book great binding history. Resource. It really is. And also, if this has piqued your interest, which we hope it has, into book binding yourself, then um, the Hand Book Binders of California is um, it's a local group which covers the whole state. We're based here in the Bay Area. And binders and bindery enthusiasts. We can put you in touch uh, through the library with them. Yeah. And Dominic is the editor of our journal and newsletter. Oh, yes, but, but John, I have to say, is our new president. We're very excited. He's the first president under 80 that we've had in, in almost 50 years. That's right. And uh, we hope that things are going to be exciting exactly. in the bookbinding world in, in, in the future months. So from John Demerit and Dominic Riley, thank you so much for joining us. And um, I'm sure we'll see you next time. Back to our reading. Yes. Goodbye. Located in the heart of the Bayview District at 5075 3rd Street, the Bayview Anna E. Wadden Branch Library is open Mondays and Tuesdays 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., Wednesdays 1 to 9 p.m., Thursdays and Fridays 1 to 6 p.m., Saturdays 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., and Sundays closed. The Mission Branch Library, just one block off Mission Street at 3359 24th Street, is open Mondays, 1 to 9 p.m., Tuesdays and Wednesdays, 10 a.m. to 9 p.m., Thursdays, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., Fridays, 1 to 6 p.m., Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., and Sundays, 1 to 5 p.m. You too can be a friend, a friend of the San Francisco Public Library. Join us. For more information, phone the friends of the San Francisco Public Library at 557-4257. We'd like to hear what you think of At the Public Library. Please send your comments to San Francisco Public Library, Media Production Services, Civic Center, San Francisco, California, 94102. You've been watching At the Public Library here on cable channel 54, City Watch. At the Public Library features news and information about the San Francisco Public Library system. And for a printed copy of some of the information in this program, pick up a copy of At the Public Library at your branch or at the main library. Tune in next time for more At the Public Library, and thanks for watching.